Statement of Cash Flows Problem 3. Orange Corp. uses the indirect method to prepare its Statement of Cash Flows. Refer to the following. Long-term notes payable, beginning balance $80,000. Long-term notes payable, ending balance $72,000. Common stock, beginning balance $3,000. Common stock, ending balance $29,000. Retained earnings, beginning balance $79,000. Retained earnings, ending balance $120,000. Treasury stock, beginning balance, $5,800. Treasury stock, ending balance, $10,400. No stock was retired. No treasury stock was sold. During the year, the company repaid $38,000 of long-term notes payable. During the year, the company borrowed $30,000 on new long-term notes payable. Net income for the year was $50,000. Assume all dividends declared were paid. What is the net cash flow provided by used for financing activities? We have a lot of information. The key here with the statement of cash flows and the statement of cash flows problems are really long is to focus on what the question's asking. It wants us to calculate the or determine the net cash flow from financing activities. We're given a ton of information here. We've got a lot, more than 10 transactions. When I do financing activities, which is what we're focusing on, I focus on the specific activities in a certain order. I like to look at it like the balance sheet. You have Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Of course, nothing here really involves assets. It's mostly liabilities and owner's equity. Really, that's all it is. The idea is looking at all this information, which transactions involve liabilities? We'll, talk, we'll do the stockholder's equity side later, but let's focus on the liabilities. Going through these transactions, it looks like A, B, K, and L all deal with liability related transactions. So A and B specifically tell us long-term notes payable, beginning and ending balances. And then K and L were told the amount the company repaid in terms of long-term notes payable. And we're told the year amount borrowed on new long-term notes payable. So let's focus on the amount of notes payable. Do the, do the beginning and ending balances, do those even matter? Well, those are red herrings. When it comes to liabilities, and remember, we're focusing on cash flows. We're thinking about cash inflows, cash outflows. When it comes to liabilities, cash inflow, we're talking about borrowing money, cash outflow, paying off money. The change in the long-term notes payable, any liabilities, the change in that. Now, changes in current ass or, sorry, current liabilities, that's a difference. That's a big difference. But we're talking about, from the financing side, long-term liabilities. The balance here, we can ignore that. What's more important, so A and B, we can ignore that. We can, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross off anytime something has either been gone through, we've used the information, or it's irrelevant. So A and B, we can, we, those are, we can ignore those items because they're irrelevant here. We can cross those out. Look down at K and L. K, during the year, the company repaid $38,000 of long-term notes payable. So repaying the notes payable. That's going to be a cash outflow of $38,000. The idea here is when you owe money and you're paying it off, you're paying that with cash. So we've gone through that. So K is now eliminated. Look at L. During the year, the company borrowed $30,000 on, on new long-term notes payable. When you borrow money, borrowing liabilities or borrowing a loan that's going to increase cash because now you have $30,000 more cash than you did before. So that is going to be an increase to cash. We can eliminate that item. Those are all the liabilities on here. So next, we're going to go through, we finished liabilities. And again, balance sheet, star of assets. We're doing financing activities here, so we ignore the assets. Liabilities. We've gone through the liabilities. Now we're going to go over to the equity side. And since it's a corporation, we're told it's Orange Corp. We're going to focus on the owners, uh, the stockholders' equity. First, focus on the paid in capital side. I like to start with common stock or preferred stock or the amount of stock. So do you see anything here where we're told about stock? Well, in C and D, we're told the beginning and ending balance. So focus on C and D, the beginning and ending balance in common stock. 
were also told in I that no stock was retired. So those transactions are important. Now, some of you going through this, you might say, well, I see treasury stock. Treasury stock is when the corporation buys back its own shares. So we're just going to focus on the common stock and preferred stock, what the corporation, what the owners own in the business right now. We will do treasury stock later on, but we're focusing right now just on the common stock. So the change in balance, we saw the liabilities that the, the change in balance for the notes payable, that didn't matter. What mattered is we had to look at the amount borrowed and the amount paid off. Here, the change, which here between the beginning and ending balance in C and D is an increase in $26,000. That is important. And putting that with I, no stock was retired, that means that all $26,000, based on the information given, we know that common stock was issued for $26,000 during the year, which increases cash. So common stock issued during the year, which increases the amount of cash, that's going to be an increase in cash of $26,000. $26,000. So we can eliminate C, D, and I. Those items are gone. All right. So now let's look at the treasury stock. So we're moving over, talking about treasury stock. Treasury stock is a contra owner's equity or stock, I'm sorry, stockholder's equity because it's when the corporation buys back its own shares. So whenever you're going through a statement of cash flows, remember, big theme is cash paid out or is it received? When you are issuing stock, common stock, you are getting cash from the owners. When you are buying, when you are buying uh, treasury stock, you are paying out cash to the owners. You're buying back their shares. Again, remember, everything is in the lens of the corporation or the business that we're doing the, the transactions for. So if you look at G and H, treasury stock beginning and ending balance, just like last time, we have a change. The change in the treasury stock, we have an increase in treasury stock at the end of the year of $4,600. We're also told in J that no treasury stock was sold. So that means that the only items, the change in balance, by it, which increased by $4,600, and that no treasury stock was sold. Those are the only items that information we have about treasury stock. But that, that's all we need. Because no treasury stock was sold, we know that all $4,600, that, that change in treasury stock, that means that that's how much was purchased back during the year. So treasury stock purchased by the corporation is 4,600, that's going to reduce reduce cash by $4,600. So we are done with those transactions. We can go ahead and we can eliminate those. All right, moving along, going to work and moving along. So we've only got four items left. We've got E, F, M, and N. And this is when we get to the most difficult part of the financing activities. And I would say even the most difficult part of the entire statement of cash flows, the dividends. This is the part that students have the most trouble with. It's challenging. You've got to do some calculations. You've also got to think about what's going on. So remember, stockholders' equity is broken into two parts, paid in capital, and then you've got retained earnings. Retained earnings is where the net income, net loss rolls into, as well as dividends reduce retained earnings. And dividends are like withdrawals, where the owner takes money out of the business. So E, F, M, and N are all going to help us determine if there were any dividends paid, specifically cash dividends. If we were told about stock dividends, it would say so, but if, if you, it does not say uh, stock dividends, it's assumed to be a cash dividend. We have the change in balance in ENF, and we're given that information there. The change in balance, 79,000 to 120,000. And then we're also told that the net income for the year was $50,000. Now we can use this information in order to determine what was the amount of dividends? And we're told that all dividends declared during the year in N were paid. So we can calculate using E, F, and M, the net income. Because remember, again, stockholders' equity is broken into paid in capital and retained earnings. And retained earnings is made up of withdrawals, which are also known as dividends, revenues and expenses, which revenue and expenses equals the net income, net loss. We're trying to determine and isolate 
the W, the withdrawals, which are the dividends. If we know net income, which we're told net income is $50,000, which net income, by the way, goes under operating activities, does not go under financing activities, then we can figure out, we can figure out what the amount of dividends were during the year. And because we're told that all dividends were paid during the year, we can isolate that number and get that. All right. So the calculation, and the best way to think about this, I'm going to do this below. If we ever retained earnings, there is a statement on the change in stockholders' equity that goes through retained earnings. We have a beginning balance of $79,000. We're going to have our W, our R, and our E and wire, right? The I goes under the stockholders' equity. That's the, I'm sorry, the I goes under paid in capital. That's the investment side. The W is the dividends, right? For corporation, we call the W dividends. The R and the E is our net income. And again, we're trying to figure out here the amount of dividends for the year. And all those dividends were paid. All the dividends declared were paid. So the R and the E, the net income, we, we do know that amount. That amount, we're told, is $50,000. Now that $50,000 does not go under the financing activities, but, but we do need to calculate the amount of dividends so we can cross that off. We've used that information because it goes right here. And then... The ending balance in retained earnings, we're told at the end of the year, is $120,000. So using this information, using the retained earnings with $79,000 beginning, retained earnings ending is $120,000. And also we know that all dividends declared were paid during the year. This question mark, this will be the amount of dividends that were paid during the year that we put into our financing activities on the statement of cash flows. So if we calculate this and we determine the way we do it, and you can use algebra, we have our ending balance of $120,000, and we're going to subtract away $79,000 and $50,000. And that's going to give us $9,000. That's going to equal negative $9,000. $9,000. And some of you might be wondering, well, why is it a negative? Because remember, dividends reduce stockholders' equity. So a negative makes sense. We're told the retained earnings balance was positive. So I'll include that now. The ending balance was positive, And we know that net income increases um, the retained earnings, stockholders' equity. Dividends always decrease. So that's why it was a negative. If this was a net loss, it'd be negative. Retained earnings balance could also be negative as well, but we're told it's positive. So we just determined the amount of cash dividends paid during the year, and that is negative $9,000. We can now calculate the amount. If you want to pause the video and take a second to calculate, go through all these amounts, and you will find that the, the net cash from financing activities, again, going through the positives and negatives, equals $4,400. Now, before I stop the video, go back, look at these things. Again, focus in that we're, we're looking at the financing activities. Note that some items, they have no effect, like the net income, but we still need it to calculate items. Go through all these things over, especially at cash dividends, very difficult, but the idea is that to, if you understand the retained earnings, stockholders' equity, the WIRE, right, the, the acronym W-I-R-E, WIRE, withdraws investments, revenue, expenses, it can help you, it can help guide you through the calculations here.